Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Eric Parker with One Number, and in today's video, what I want to do is I want to walk through a question that I just recently uh, got an email from somebody. Uh, what they described to me and what they were trying to do was to be able to display data over time, but not necessarily have the same buckets of time representing each of the different bars or points in a line graph. So what I mean by that is, you know, usually you pick a date like, uh, or a date unit, like a year or a week or a month, and that represents your data. And they said, well, we want last year represented as one point. We want previous quarters represented as other points. We want months in the current quarter represented as their own points. Um, so, you know, a little bit of an unconventional way to look at data, but, you know, certainly something that you could come across. So we're going to do a walkthrough of that today, and you can actually see on my screen already, um, I've got some examples where you can see, I'm just going to kind of mark up each of these different points here. Um, I've got, is that five? <laughs> yeah, five different points showing up, right? 2020, 21Q1, 21Q2, 20, July 2021, and August 2021. So I'm shooting this video in early August, which is why you're seeing the points show up like that. So let's cover how you would write a calculated field to be able to display um, data at several different date units at the same time. All right. So I'm going to go through and I am going to go ahead and add sales to my column shelf. I'm sorry. I'm going to flip it to my row shelf. That looks better. Okay. And then we're going to write a calculation using, um, in this case, I'm going to use order date from Superstore uh, data set. So right click the drop down there, create a calculated field. I'll pull this onto the screen so we can all see it. And I'll call this my date levels calculation. So I'm going to set this calculation up so it's totally dynamic. Uh, but if you want to hard code values as well, you can. So you could say if the year equals 2020, then 2020. But I'm going to make it dynamic so that last year is always represented as just the year value, for instance. Okay. So uh, we wanna, I'm going to start this off by making sure that I write a clause that will exclude years before last year. So I'm going to say if the date difference in years uh, of my order date to today is, let me think about this for a second. Uh, zero would be this year, one would be last year, and two would be two years ago. So I would just say is greater than two, um, then exclude. Probably don't want that. Okay. And I'm going to say else if the date diff in year between order date and today equals one, so last year, then, and all of my outputs are going to need to be strings. So I'm going to do some string conversions as we go. So I'll say then uh, year of order date, and I need to convert that to a string, meaning it's just a text expression or output rather than numeric. So string of year of order date. Okay. I'm going to say else if the date diff in quarters, and that's just quarter, lowercase, singular quotations, uh, between order date and today, is greater than zero, so it was one quarter ago, two quarters ago, three quarters ago, then uh, I'm gonna steal the string of the year. And this is gonna get kind of long, so hopefully I can fit this all on the screen here. I may end up having to break this into two rows. And then I'm gonna say plus a space uh, and the letter Q, <laughs> uh, plus date part quarter of order date. And I need to convert that to a string because that is also a numeric output. I think I'm going to put this on two lines so we can look at it all at once. Okay, so one more time to run through that. Else if the date difference in quarter between the order date and today is greater than zero, then give me the string of my year, so it's say like 2021 plus a space in the letter Q, um, plus whatever the quarter number is. Then I'm just going to say, I think I could just finish it like this. Else, the string, I think actually I need to take the uh, string of the year of order date one more time. Um, plus, I'm going to use a function called date name here. So I'll do a space plus date name month 
of order date. So that would be like, if it's one, then it would say January. All right, we'll come back here if we need to change anything. I think we're in good shape though. So let's hit okay and put this into action on our worksheet. So I'm gonna hit okay, put my date levels calculation on the column shelf. And whoa, ended up with a little more data than I expected. Oh, I just need to use the exclude, that's right. Okay, so I got 2020, I've got my most recent months, the quarters, got this exclude data. So let me do this. I'm gonna go ahead and move my date levels calculation onto filters. And I'm just gonna exclude the exclude portion. So that gets rid of some of it. And actually, something's a little bit off because I still have my 2019 data as well, which I thought was gonna be part of the exclude. So let me go ahead and open that up one more time. We'll do a little troubleshooting and then we'll hopefully be in good shape. I think it's just this first clause here. Uh, if the date difference in year of order date is greater than one, I should have said greater than or equal to two. Um, so that, that should clear it up. So we want last year to be represented as a bar, but anything that's more than last year should not. Cool. So at this point, it's just a matter of doing a little bit of reorganization, right? Because you can see that it's just trying to sort alphabetically. So I could just manually do that once. How I generally like to change default sorts though is to go to my field in the data pane, hit the drop down, go to default properties and sort. And then I'm gonna go ahead, in this case, I'm gonna do a manual sort. You know, maybe there's some creative things we could do with calculations to make it so that we wouldn't have to do this. Um, but for now, I'll just do this. Move Q1 and two ahead of July and August. And so the cool part about that default sort that I just set is if I use this field in another worksheet now, um, it'll remember this sort order that I just set. So there you go. That's a little uh, walkthrough of how to set up a calculation like this. Uh, I'm going to pull up the formulas uh, one more time. I think mostly you're just probably interested in this bottom formula. The top is more if you kind of hard coded some of those dates. Um, and I'll be providing um, some of the code in a blog post as well that'll uh, be linked here with this video so that if you want to check that out, copy it down and maybe alter it for your purposes, then you can. So thanks for following along for this video and we'll uh, look forward to catching you on another one soon.